Dozens have been arrested, according to reports. Hundreds took part in an afternoon march through Manhattan's financial district, the focal point of their frustrations during the last six months. The majority of arrests occurred when protesters put up a tent which violates park rules. And uh, the Occupy movement, along with other protests, have highlighted certain constitutional rights in the US and elsewhere. Though Western nations have been quick to criticize countries who don't share their same democratic views, they're not necessarily leading by example when it comes to human rights. As Marina Portnoy explains, the strong arm of the law is leaving some to wonder if they're preaching hypocrisy instead of democracy. The US and its European allies have many things in common. Security, politics, and a familiar practice of scolding outsiders about the pillars of democracy. The Iranian people have a universal right to assembly and free speech. This is the increasing suppression of human rights and of democracy, and there's a big step backwards for Iran. Democracy, rule of law, human rights, these are our values, and we believe these must be respected by the Egyptian authorities. In Russia, We've seen crackdowns on civil society groups. As Western leaders wag their finger around the world, wooden batons and brutal force have been used to quell public protests at home. Riot police handcuffs and iron fists have repeatedly been used against unarmed demonstrators in Greece, Spain, and London where thousands flood the streets to protest against austerity measures and unemployment. They should focus on getting their own house in order and practice what they preach, rather than n nosing about in other uh, countries and trying to, you know, grandstand on an international scale, rather than deal with, uh, you know, their, their own very serious democratic deficit. On the other side of the Atlantic, Uprisings against economic inequality and corporate greed have left countless Occupy Wall Street activists covered in blood, temporarily blinded, and behind bars. The movement is currently planning to draw tens of thousands of demonstrators to the upcoming G8 and NATO summits in May. But this week, the U.S. military is unveiling its latest non-lethal weapon to members of the press. It felt like opening up an oven door, almost mixed with a sting from about my sternum to my neck. The new active denial system can repel crowds using an invisible electromagnetic beam that delivers a blast of intense heat up to one kilometers away. Without a sound, a smell, or even a warning, the weapon promises to disperse crowds and reinforce security. While the military weapon isn't currently intended to be used by police, Critics say ray guns, like water cannons, could eventually be rolled out in the land of the free. We're seeing an intensification of repression uh, because people are challenging the system. They're challenging it uh, in Europe. They're challenging it in the United States. And it's easy for our leaders to point the fingers somewhere else rather than take responsibility uh, here in America, do anything differently. Lecturing others on democracy and human rights has become a brand of Western foreign policy, a discourse that claims to be based on the highest of standards. But as recent years has shown, it's a lot easier to scold others when everything is fine at home. Mace protesters in Oakland or injured students in Europe might suggest that their leaders do a bit more homework before attempting to be a teacher of democracy. Marina Portnaya, RT, New York. Well, I'll be back uh, with this week's headlines in just a couple of minutes. Stay with us live here.